Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. This is an example of a photograph that's almost perfect. Real nice, clean shot. Everything looks really good at first glance. But even this can use some improvements, and I'll show you what's wrong, and I'll show you how to fix that. Let's look at our final first. There we go. Add in a nice little reflections in here add some sparkle and interest to the image but more importantly than that there's a reflection right there that I want to get rid of let's take a look at those sunglasses this one's a real hard one to get away from because you have reflective surfaces in here if I zoom in on the right eye there's no problem in there see a little bit of street in here some other miscellaneous things you can't really identify no problem that's fine but if we move over here to the left hand side up there we go. There's the photographer sitting right there in that lens. We don't want to have that photographer in there. That really kind of ruins the picture. So we're going to hide the photographer and then we'll put in that lens flare and that little light streak thing. Now to do this, a couple of things to keep in mind. One is that you need to stay very careful about any selections that you stay inside of the frame and keep that nice and clean. Other one is you only want to put in stuff here from what's inside so that everything matches exactly. Now we can't really get rid of this. He takes up too much of the image to actually get rid of this photographer. But we can hide him or disguise him so it kind of disappears. And that's the whole idea. The first thing I want to do is I want to protect everything else by making a selection in here. Several ways to do that. You could come in here and using the polygonal lasso tool make a real careful selection right around that edge. All I care about is this side. Or let's try to see if we can do this a little bit more easily. I'm going to pull in a guideline from the top up there and a guideline from the left hand side and pull those just to the edge of that frame. Just like that. It's right against the edge of the frame. And I'll see if I can get that exactly on there. There we go. Let's now switch over here to our marquee tools and grab the elliptical marquee, come right up upper left hand corner right there and drag down. And as I pull that down, this will come very close to filling in the lens. Now it's just a matter of adjusting this till it's exactly right. We're pretty good down there. It's a little too tall up here and over there so we can modify that selection. Go up to select and transform right down here gives you control handles. Let's see if we can just pull this in just a little bit here at the top. That looks good and I think just a tap sideways on the cursor keys or arrow keys on the keyboard and there we go. That's really nice and clean. What I really care about is right down along there and I think we're just fine. So there's our selection. Click on the green check and there we go. Okay now Let's see if we can get rid of this photographer in here, or at least disguise him. Luckily, a lot of his outfit is a very similar gray to this street in here. So I'm going to put some stuff over the top, see if we can kind of just make him go away. We'll be using the clone stamp tool. Right now for this image, I have this set at a soft brush, you can see here. Opacity is at 100, and for this picture, it's 40 pixels. The size will depend, of course, on the size of your image. So I'll start right down in here I have something which is easy to see so I'll grab that alt and click right on that line and click and then let's kind of pull that over here and see if I can extend that yellow shape out a bit there we go let's kind of bring that yellow shape down pretty good that helps I can take this stuff in here and bring it over his legs and alt click and let's bring this in. I'm going to do this in just a few stages here. Like that. That looks pretty good. 
Let's now see if we can do a little bit in here. I think I'll leave that that may disappear into the street. I want to get rid of the arm and fade out this part of the jacket. I think this may just fade in and take care of that head up there. So let's try the head first. Now notice that my brush is too large up here. I'm going to use the left bracket key and just bring that down a little bit or just go to the option menu and bring your brush down a little bit. Hold the Alt key down, grab a bit of that sky and let's see if we can just kind of continue our skyline along there. And then a few little touches in here to clean the sky up. Looks pretty good. So we've gotten rid of the top of the head. I think I gotta ignore that part. Let's get rid of this hand over here. I'll just take some of this stuff right here and bring that in over the hand. And he's already beginning to just disappear into the background. Let's do a little more over here and see if we can just kind of fade out that right side jacket, you know, his, his right. Pretty well gone. This bit of the jacket and that I think hides pretty well. We can still kind of make out this arm, so let's see if we can get rid of that arm. And I'll take some of this stuff down here. This is his jacket. I'm going to pull his jacket just straight up like that. And then a little bit just off to the side and help break up some of that shape. Now it's still a little bit rough. I want a little something else in here. I'll take some of this dark and just bring some of that in and break that shape in too. Just make it so it's hard to recognize anything. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now there's a few dust scratches. I might as well get rid of those while I'm at it. Since we're right in here close, there we are. And I think that looks pretty good. I think you really can't recognize there being a photographer any longer in this shot. Let's just zoom out. I'll leave the selection on for a minute. Let's zoom out and see how that looks. Okay, looks good. That looks like you know there's nothing really there, nothing really recognizable. It's just kind of some basic shapes in there. And I think once you're backed out enough, even if anybody focuses on that, they won't recognize any shape and they'll just ignore that. So we've got that taken care of. That. But as you see, the trick, if possible, you, know, you may have to do a lot of this kind of stuff to really hide somebody if they're really obvious. But if they kind of blend in a bit like he did, you can leave some of him in there and just disguise as much as you can. For instance, that curve right there, that's the side of his head. But you can't tell it is in here because we cut the top off. So it looks as if it's just part of that back building. Okay, we can deselect that now. Deselect. There we go. We can get rid of these guidelines. They're no longer needed. So let's clear the guides out. And we'll back out. Now, let's see if we can put in that highlight on the glasses. Now there are two glasses. I'm going to have a main highlight up here and a little bit of secondary one down there. So for our main highlight we need to first kind of visualize where that is in the overall page. So I'll pull a guideline down from the top to the top of the sunglasses right there. It's kind of where I want it. And one in from the left hand side and line that up so about here, it's a little bit off center as you can see, and it's pretty close to the top. Just kind of you know, memorize that positioning. The reason for memorizing that is that the tool we'll be using doesn't allow you an exact placement. We can fix that though, or make that better by a little trick here. So we're on the background layer at this point. Let's make a new layer. There we go. And I'm going to fill this layer with black. So I'll just revert this and paint bucket black. There we are. So we're on a black layer. We're now going to put a lens flare on that spot. One more thing. I normally say to save the or do a new layer instead of the background layer. In this case it is such a small change that I'm not worrying about that one little trick. So here's our clean black and then filter render lens flare. So we have a black frame here, a black frame here. You can see where those cross lines are. So I want to grab the hotspot, a little, little plus sign there, grab that and move it over until it's kind of visually in the same spot as your guidelines. You won't be exact, but that's okay. We can fix that. But we'll be very, very close this way, so about there. Now you have four different options. The 50 to 300 zoom, which is this thing. 35 millimeter prime has kind of these, these lines coming out of it. 
105 prime, which is a white, and then a movie prime, this kind of weird streak thing. So I like the 105 prime for this particular use. You can adjust the brightness, but I'll leave it at 100%. I think that looks pretty good for our, our image. Choose OK. And we got very, very close, very, very close on that one. Now, the reason why I, we made this on a black layer is I can now move the black layer a little bit until I get it exactly where I want it. Now, when I move that, notice that it opened up some space over here on the right-hand side. We can fill that in, just grab the paint bucket. We're still on black, click into that area, and it fills that in with black. Okay, but you're saying it's a black layer. Easy to solve that. First, let's get rid of those guys that are no longer needed. Now, using our blending modes up here, we're going to blend this layer in with the layer underneath. And the one you want is screen right here. That's going to hide that black and just show through that highlight. So there we go. There's a nice highlight. Now, if it's too bright, you can come in here and you can adjust the brightness using our slider control. But I'm going to leave that full on. I think it's pretty exciting. Now, because these sunglasses are very similar, there should be another highlight over here. There's a slight curve, of course, of the sunglasses, and one will pick up more of a bright spot than the other. So I'll do a little smaller bright spot over here on the same layer. So reverse the colors to white, go to a paintbrush, and you see there's the size of the paintbrush. Now it's a soft brush, 99 pixels. Bring the opacity down a bit, maybe down about 80. And come into the same spot on this lens as we have it on this lens. It's kind of right over here. And just center it right there and one tap should be all that you need. That just gives you the little secondary reflection off of that glass makes it look much more realistic. So there we go. Fast little demonstration, but a few tricks and a few thoughts on how to repair that sunglasses problem, which is a very common problem if you're taking pictures of people with sunglasses because chances are you're going to be reflected inside that sunglass. But there we go, a little bit of photo retouch in here to hide that photographer and then make the image a bit more exciting by putting in a bright lens flare on those lenses. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 